The circulatory system is an example of an organ system, and its role is to transport oxygen and nutrients to our body's tissues. This organ system relies on three main things. The blood, which carries the all-important oxygen and nutrients, the blood vessels, which hold that blood, and the heart, which pumps the blood to keep it moving through the vessels. In this video, we'll take a closer look at the structure and the function of the heart. Then in two separate videos, we'll take a look at the vessels and the blood. As you can see from this image, you can actually think of the circulatory system as a double circulatory system, because there are two distinct loops. One of them carries deoxygenated blood from the heart to the lungs, where it gains oxygen and then flows back to the heart. While this other one carries that oxygenated blood to the rest of the body, where it gives up its oxygen to the tissues, becoming deoxygenated, and then flows back to the heart, to start all over again. Taking a closer look at the heart though, we can see that it consists of one, two, three, four chambers, with thick muscular walls surrounding them, and then veins and arteries coming in and out. Now, whenever you're looking at an image of the heart, like we are here, it's as if you're looking at another person from their front. So their left side of the heart is actually on our right, and their right side is on our left. Pretty much all of the diagrams of the heart that you come across are drawn in this way. So just remember that the left side is on our right, and the right side is on our left. You also need to know that the top chambers are called atria, with an individual one being called an atrium, and the bottom chambers are ventricles. Between the chambers and the vessels, we find valves, which prevent the blood from flowing backwards, ensuring that it always flows in the right direction. Let's take a look at the path that the blood takes as it passes through the heart. First, blood flows into the heart by the vena cava and the pulmonary vein. From these, it flows into the right atrium and left atrium, respectively. Blood from the pulmonary vein has just come from the lungs and so is oxygenated, whilst the blood in the vena cava is returning from the loop around the body and so is deoxygenated. Then, as the two atria contract together, they push the blood into the ventricles. And just an instant later, the two ventricles contract and push the blood out into the pulmonary artery, which travels to the lungs, and the aorta, which feeds the rest of the body. At the same time, the atria will refill with new blood, and the whole cycle will repeat. In fact, this cycle repeats around 70 times a minute which is over 100,000 times each day. To keep this beat steady, we have a group of cells in the right atrium that act as a pacemaker. And these pacemaker cells produce small electrical impulses, which spread through the muscular walls of the heart, causing them to contract. In some rare cases though, these pacemaker cells don't work properly. To fix this, doctors can implant an artificial pacemaker, which is a small device that we place just under the skin above the heart and has a wire that can carry an electrical current down to the heart, telling it to contract regularly, just like healthy functioning pacemaker cells would. Now, to clear up any confusion, we just wanted to point out that the term artery refers to any vessel that carries blood away from the heart, while a vein is any vessel that carries blood to the heart. Often, students get confused and think that the arteries have to carry oxygenated blood, and veins have to carry deoxygenated blood. Although this is the case most of the time, it's not always true. For example, the pulmonary artery here carries deoxygenated blood, but it's still an artery because it carries blood away from the heart. While the pulmonary vein carries oxygenated blood, but it is a vein because it's carrying blood to the heart. One last thing before we finish is that the heart also needs its own supply of oxygenated blood. And it gets this from small arteries that branch off the aorta, called coronary arteries. These vessels encircle the heart to make sure that the muscle tissue gets all of the oxygen and nutrients that it needs. And that's everything you need to know about the heart. If you found it useful, then please do share it with your friends, and we'll see you next time.